Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Dr. Joey interviews Christian business professionals just like you to discover their secrets for working faith positive in a negative world. Welcome to Faith Positive Radio with Dr. Joey Fawcett. Hey, Faith Positive Nation. So when I started this coaching business that, that I own now and just blessed to work with people all around the world with, through, um, we sat down. Actually, we, we have family meetings when our girls were here. We'd either have them around our round kitchen table or we'd go sit on our bed. Well, this one was a little more intimate because I had a big announcement to make. So we sat on the bed, right? And uh, so I shared with our daughters uh, the decision that my wife and I had made that I was going to leave full-time employment, which I was engaged in. And I was going to launch off into this company that I had been writing books for and doing different things with for a while. And uh, we didn't know exactly how our daughters were going to take this information. You know, we, 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 were, we were convinced it was God's will, but we weren't sure how they were going to interpret it. So our older daughter was about 15, 16 at the time. She looks at me after I go through this whole spiel, you know, trying to do the sensitive daddy thing. And uh, she looks at me and she says, okay, dad, it's good for you, but am I still going to be able to get those new blue jeans I wanted? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> boiled it right down to what was in it for her. Right? So uh, if you have ever started your own company or if you even thought about starting your own business, right? And you have a family as much as we like to think the professional and the personal can be divided. They really can't. Uh, not if you want to be successful at both, right? Or yeah. at even one of them. So today's guest is an expert in helping you understand what it takes to pay attention to both sides of the success formula, the business and the family and the family of the business, right? So help me welcome Faith Positive Nation to Faith Positive Radio in this episode. I'm really excited to introduce to you, Jim Shields. Jim, welcome to Faith Positive Radio, buddy. Thanks for having me, Dr. Joey. Pleasure to be here. Man, I am, I am all about what you do because it seems like so often we just look for our divine design or look for some calling from God and we go pursue that without necessarily uh, paying attention to the effect that has on the people around us. How did you discover this work of helping entrepreneurs understand success in business as well as success in their families? You know, I started really working into it, not only the first and foremost was I was a student of my own work, you know, with, the, with my own family and things that I wanted to improve and people that I had seen go before me that had big balance sheets, but behind the curtain were absolutely miserable at home. And that, that really took me. I was lucky enough to start teaching at some pretty cool events and different things from the success side in business at a young age. And I just saw people that were very successful on stage, but but not behind the curtain. And that mm. made me nervous. So I wanted to be a student of my own fears, I guess, for lack of better <laughs> words, or yeah. turning my fears into faith that I would do it differently. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was my own thing. And I just saw a hole in the market. And I, I've always had a pretty good ability of building trust uh, with multi layers of, of the family that I didn't know I had until I started to do this just as a side thing or getting a surprise phone call. Could you talk with me and my team? And it kind of just snowballed from there. I have another investment company that I own, but this has always been my passion work, at least very heavily for the last six years. Mm -hmm. So um, writing the family board meeting and designing our company 18 summers, our whole goal is we want you to be successful at work and at home. And there's no reason you can't have both. Mm. Yeah. But the common myth is that you trade it off, right? That there's got to be a trade off for being successful. Yeah. As you said, having a nice balance sheet, uh, and so often you see somebody who's really successful in business, they reach a sweet suite or uh, start their own company or something. But man, there's just relationships littered all along yeah. the roadside of their path to success. What are some of the keys that you need to pay attention to in balancing both family and business? Well, I, I like to look at questioning the norm where I, I had that badge of honor when I first started my business where you absolutely have to work hard. You absolutely have yeah. to take chances. Right. But there's some lower written text that says you need to give it all up. And I just don't think that's true. Mm. Like you need to throw everything into the wind to get that business going. Your family will understand. They'll wait. It'll come online within a few years. Mm. Uh, but a few years turns into a few more years and a few more years. And the next thing you know, your 18 summers with your kids are done and over and gone. 
That's and, right. And that's, that's just not something that I wanted to see. So right or wrong, you know, all the entrepreneurs you work with out there and have a strong faith, sure. I look at my wife and my children as my most valued clients and investors in my business. So I'm an entrepreneur. I'm wired like one. Yeah, I have faith, but it's also that's, I want to view them as that. And would I ever cancel a meeting with my biggest client for my business? No, I wouldn't do that. Do I schedule things with them? Yes. So I, I really just started to look at two things, keeping them in priority before everyone else. Mm. I didn't care how big the other client or investor or this person in my business was. They were the most important mm. part of my business, whether they weren't even actually working there or not. Mm. And I had a mentor of mine talk about rhythms. Yes. And I like the word rhythms. I do too. The word habit. Rhythm has some musical elements, some soul yeah. to it. It has you some choose. soul to it. That's right. Yeah, you choose it. Uh -huh. yeah. Habits, you can have a bad drinking habit. You can have a bad smoking habit. You can have a habit of never showing up on time, a habit of yelling in public. I don't know, but it sounds <laughs> forced upon you or something that you don't yeah. actually want. Right. So I always try to set rhythms around family life. Mm. Um, and I found that if people would just set a few rhythms in their life, and of course, a lot of your listeners are thinking, oh, well, church on Sunday. That's a great start. But if you really want to develop those relationships, a lot of things happen on those other six days every week. And what I've tried to help is identifying for myself what rhythms work, what mm -hmm. ones can we actually stick to, what ones can we see results from, and how do we simply integrate them into our busy life so that as we run up that business mountain, yeah. we don't leave our family behind. We don't feel like a stranger. We don't feel guilty and depressed like we're living on the surface with them. Um, and that's what our business is all about, setting powerful rhythms and mm. sharing certain lessons that will bring them closer together. Mm, yeah, because what if you get to the top of the mountain and you're by yourself? Yeah, you know, and even worse, there's, yeah, or you, you're, you're there with them. But if you really had to be honest, they view you as a stranger. Mm. You're almost okay. like an, an ATM machine or a part-time disciplinarian. And yes. these are things that, that I've heard, and you know, mm. uh, obviously you're, the Bible talks about protecting your family and providing for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and that becomes a big badge of honor for all of us entrepreneurs. I want to provide for my family. I want to protect them. But there's the L word too that we forget. And you got to love them. Just yeah. simply love them. And that's, that's something that's been a big lesson for me over the last few years is, mm. um, is love them first, then provide and protect. Mm. And sometimes us men used to think, no, the badge of honor says provide, protect, love. But if we start with those other two, we can be a little more hardened. Mm -hmm. We can be a little over serious on certain things. I just found that order is real important. All three of them are virtues. All three of them are things that, you know, that, that scripture talks about. But I think that's the order it has to be. And I try to help people remember that. Mm, because if you have that loving relationship with them, Jim, right, mm -hmm. then you're protecting them. Yeah. And you're also providing the most important asset they'll ever have. And uh, when it comes time for new blue jeans, they'll understand, right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. So what are some of these best practices you've observed in terms of getting the love, protect, provide equation in the right order? Yeah, well, in, in, my, in my book, The Family Board Meeting, I identified a simple rhythm that I do with, with each of my children. Uh, and that's just like, if you look at big companies, they have a board meeting every 90 days with their company. Uh, and it's used to reunite the team, look ahead to the next 90 days. You know, a lot of entrepreneurial companies use them. Old, boring IBM style companies used them as well, and they weren't quite as engaging. Uh, but what I started to do about seven years ago, eight years ago now, was I started to have board meetings with each one of my children. Mm. where. Every 90 days, I had a, a quote-unquote board meeting, an important meeting with each of my children. Hmm. And it was real simple. And I, I did it, and I saw great results. And at first, I didn't share it because I thought, oh, this is silly. I'm not going to tell anyone. Uh, but it <laughs> took on and helped a lot of relationships you know, besides just my own. So every 90 days, Dr. Joey, I'm one-on-one -on -one without electronics, doing a fun activity of their choice and spending time talking for at least four hours or more. Mm. And these sound so simple, but sometimes it's the most simple that's the most profound. Yes. Because a lot of people of us, I know before we were talking, I came from a family of five. Your wife came up from a family of six. Mm -hmm. There is something magic that can combine in those things. 
Mm -hmm. You actually schedule the time and then you make the commitment that you're going to be one-on-one. One-on-one is the most, one of the most powerful, simple shortcuts to better connection with each one of your family members. You got to separate the parts, strength in the whole. Mm. And this one-on-one time is key. Turning off the phones and electronics, I go into in the book of what's happening in today's society of the actual mm. disconnect it's causing. Yeah. And then letting them choose the day. You want buy-in from a teenager, mm-hmm. let them design the day. Yeah. And you go along and save time then to talk. So I, that's my simplest definition of it. You could probably put it on the back of a napkin. Yeah. Um, what that's I do. Okay. I love simple yet profound. That's yeah, awesome. So every 90 days I have an important meeting with each one of my kids. Uh-huh. Uh, and those are pillars and memories in our relationship. You know, and looking back on them, the breakthroughs and the conversations I've had on a deeper level never would have happened if we didn't have these days set every quarter together. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'd say the other rhythm that we really start with is my wife and I. We do date night with a question every Wednesday night. Date uh, night so, with a question? Yeah. Oh, without date question. Date night with a question. No, with a question. With a question. Not without question. So we do it without question, but with a question. So <laughs> okay, tell me more. Yeah. Well, again, simple is profound. Yeah. So I was taught years ago by a mentor: if you are too busy to keep dating your wife, you're going to be too busy to be married. And that kind of you know Whoa. stuck me. In the yeah, that's some so that time, man. <laughs> it's, wow. And it's so true. When yeah. I've worked with different families and I'll say with starting with simple questions, when's the last time you went on a date with your husband, and your wife? Oh, well, we've been busy. I don't know. 10 months. I'm going, yeah, Oh man, kids, you gotta have all new- their activities and yeah. yeah and you got to separate the parts to strengthen the whole. So mm. one-on-one is key. So once a week we're together one-on-one again, my phone is not invited on my, my date night with my <laughs> wife. Um, it's just, you take that one text or email it's you've shown, that's more important and you're not really fully there. Mm-hmm. Um, but what the question was interesting because like you were, you were kind of joking right there, but being yeah. truthful, like kids have their activities and this and that, that's sure. all important. But you don't want, when you have this beautiful one-on-one time with the person you love probably most in the world, mm-hmm. um, you don't want to be saying, well, how was soccer practice today? The weather was kind of cold. Well, isn't it? <laughs> you know, the thunderstorms I was just telling you about. And so what we so you want to dig a little was, deeper, Jim. You don't want to yeah. keep it shallow. Yeah. I always joke when I speak on stage, like if with my closest relationships for the next 50, 60 years, we're just going to talk about the weather. Oh, man, you might have to shoot me now. You know, we just no. of us. No, hey, I just really want that. I can you pick know, up my phone and look at the Weather Channel app. I don't need a conversation with somebody yeah. I love, right? No. When sometimes there's that awkwardness and it's how do you, even though you're in love, you're redating every week. So what my wife and I try to do is we take one or two questions a week um, okay. that I think are going to get us below the surface. They're going to open up more conversation. And, and that has been so key. It sounds so simple, but... Date night's one thing, but you can go to date night. I've seen it. You've seen it. They're out. They're on their phone. <laughs> They're yeah. not really talking. Yeah. And then they might, they might, it just might be complete surface talk because right, they're right. feeling They're feeling uncomfortable. It does, there's, there's things that might want to be said. So we found questions can be a great leeway Give and they could example. be something as light. Sure. And people mm-hmm. say, do you have your list? We haven't published a list yet. Cause to be honest, we pretty much just made up our own or scoured the internet, you know, but look see, up, there, Google it and, you know. Yeah, Jim, but there are a lot of dudes out there who are listening or watching this right now. Man, I need a question. Jim, help me. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's, let's start with, with one that um, is, is really a, a highlight. So we did a, a five week RV adventure this, this summer, mm-hmm. all the way from Florida up to Nova Scotia. It was phenomenal. Wow. Um, and this was, this was weeks ago, but one of our questions was, what were the highlights of the adventure with the family and why? And just hearing that and replaying some of the magic moments and the why brings in the conversations, the things mm. you want to do more of mm. and things that we didn't even realize they appreciated so much. And it gets you below the surface. It really concretes the memory and it wants you to build the next one and better ways to build the next one and things mm. to do more of and maybe things to do less of. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's one. Um, I know a, a tough one that I always give example of. Name a time 
that you felt I didn't show up for you and how it made you feel. Mm. It's a tough one. Man, so you can't go into this with your dupes up. <laughs> you got uh, to come with, in with your guard down, ready to learn, with, right? With your guard down. Yeah. And so that's just one, you know, name a time that I didn't show up for you and why you felt that way and how it made you feel. Mm. And well, if you'll listen to that, if you'll, if you'll hear what's said, mm. there can be some real power there, mm. you know? Um, mm. So they can be anything from highlights. Where are the next three places that you would love to visit um, on our own, just the two of us on, on short adventures? Mm. You know, where, what's something that you wish you had learned as a kid and you feel your life would have been better if you had? You know, mm. th these are just ways to get to, I want to keep getting to know my, my girl as much as I can for as many years as I can. Mm. Uh, and when you, when you find questions that you normally wouldn't ask, like, how's the weather? How was your day? Oh, yeah. Could you please name the time that I wasn't there for you and how it, how it made you feel and why you felt that way? Yeah. yeah, there's a little bit of prep. And I'm talking a little bit of prep. But think about it. If you go on a date once a week, all year, maybe you're on vacation or something, you do 50 dates that, that year, and you've done one powerful question, you know 50 more deeper details about your spouse wow. that you otherwise wouldn't know. Mm. And it's that slow mm. building of the relationship wall. So mm. that's, mm. again, the solution doesn't have to be as complicated as we've made the problem, Dr. Joey. That's what I always say. Mm. There are some simple rhythms that, one, another one for me and my wife, every morning we wake up before my feet hit the ground, we roll over into each other, we do some things of gratitude, say a short prayer together, you know, with both of us going back and forth, then my feet hit the ground. And that's a great one for me. But mm. I'm telling you this is not to say, oh man, well, what, I need to get a bunch of rhythms. The question is, what rhythms really work? Mm. And if you don't have any, set a couple powerful ones that you stick to. They're non-negotiable. Mm. And I find if people will do that, and again, for a lot of your listeners, church on Sunday is a great starting point. Um, but there's, there's other ones that have to go in around it. And that mm. is especially for me, I found one-on-one -on -one time with my wife and mm. then, and then s separating out time with my children individually has been absolutely key. Now, somebody's listening or watching Jim and they're saying, okay, that sounds great. That sounds great. But I got four kids and a, and a spouse. So that's five meetings. Okay. The kids are just once a quarter to twice a week. I'm already overworked and, and yet I'm not getting everything done in my business. How do I handle this? How do I make this a priority? It is not a hundred percent. It is not a hundred percent, but 90% of the time, at least 90 plus percent better than I ever did in school. <laughs> um, well, better than I'm doing now, right? Yeah, right? Exactly. Started to do better than what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, and right now it's the weather and soccer practice. <laughs> See, and but what I found is you are. It's I think that Stephen Covey thing where you're cutting down that big tree. Yeah, yeah. Dull saw. Got to sharpen it, man. These things, man. When you sharpen, you are re-energized. One one of the biggest things, and there's been studies on this. People who are unhappy at home are less productive, you know, less team oriented. I mean, there's just so many things that this correlates to. Mm. And that includes yourself, especially yep. if you're building a business. This is again, that thing where I think I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. you're, you're again, sprinting up that entrepreneurial mountain all by yourself, almost like that badge of honor. I'll get to enjoy my family in another two years. Mm. Man, you got to enjoy them along the way. Time mm. happens now. Mm -hmm. Not saying that you can't work hard, you're not going to work extra hours, but if you will carve out, you know, these rhythms save us from ourselves. These, these are, are, are the markers in the relationship. And I think you'll find going on a date once a week with your wife, it's not going to take away from work. It's going to add to it. Mm. You're, you're going to get fueled up in ways that you otherwise couldn't. Um, Absolutely. And that goes, that goes a long way. So I think for people who say that they're too busy, test it out. Go, mm. on, go on a date once a week for a month, then you tell me if you're too busy. Mm. You know, it's not always going to be, as you know, unfortunately, some marriages, if there's a difference of core values or something happens, they're not always going to work. But what I've found is if you just get back to some simple rhythms, yeah. it might get you 80% of the way there. Yeah, which is a whole lot farther than you are right now. Or just just take a take one of your children out one mm -hmm. time 
and just yeah. see what kind of response you get. And I loved what you said about in terms of taking your kids out for a board meeting every 90 days and letting them choose the time and the activity. Mm-hmm. It'd be so easy, it seems like to me, Jim, for us to say, okay, Rebecca, I've got this uh, Friday night open at 7 o'clock, and so I want to go somewhere with you. We're going to go to eat here da, 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 to really drive that train for them rather than giving them a time to do ownership. Because if Rebecca is a teenager, she's going to want to be hanging with her friends, right? On Friday yeah. night. Yeah. As opposed to hanging with the old man. So yeah. I love what you're talking about in terms of making the, the child have ownership of that. Now in your own family with four children, right? Your oldest is 15. Your youngest is two. Mm-hmm. You have a lot of diversity in these board oh, meetings, okay. don't you brother? <laughs> big time, big time. Yeah. So the two-year-old is just about to start because I think you can do it at two. Even the practice, people are saying, how young can you start? And I've been saying two and a half, three. But now my, my youngest, he's almost two. He's, he's not even two yet. I've been just the practice of me slating four hours with him, with my phone off. The diversity, though, it, it, it teaches you so much about what they're passionate about when you're one-on-one with no, without you know, that little iPhone distraction. And so, again, people say, I want to know what my kid's passionate about. I want to support them with their passions and their interests. You let them play in the day instead of us bossy know-it-all entrepreneurs who we swear (laughs) this is what they're interested in. (laughs) We're wrong a lot of the time. Uh, I read the book book on adolescence. I know what teenagers are interested in. Here's what we're going to do. Exactly. Give them the space to create it. And this is a controversial one, Dr. Joey, but for, again, depending on your your highest values and priorities, I'll pull my kids out of school twice a year. If they want to do it during school, I play hooky from work. They play hooky from school and we're together. And people say, what about the perfect attendance award? What, how could you do that? And I say, <laughs> I'm sorry. In, you know, in, in, in 30 years. I didn't mean to laugh years, out loud, did I? <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but I know there are people like that. <laughs> yeah, but, but when you look at it, what really matters most to you? Yeah. For me, in 30, 40 years, what's going to matter more to my sons? Mm. What are they going to remember more? Mm. That day where I put work and school ahead, our relationship ahead of work and school, I think that that shows a value that I'll stand behind any day of the week. Ten so I ten play, ten. Ho- I play hooky with pride. Now we're talking twice a year. I'm not yeah, saying once really? a week, you know, cause there's some in the summertime, there might be one on a Saturday, but twice a year, man, it is a magic feeling where my phone is not invited with us for the day. We're yeah. doing something they want to do. It's just the two of us. Mm, there are so many people, Dr. Joey, I've talked to entrepreneurs like ourselves that I work with. They look back, their mom, mother or father, usually their father, because I was the busy one out of the house. He said, I didn't have a single day like that with my dad ever. Mm. And I would give six figures easily, mm. if not more, to, to have get him back. Like mm. Yeah, Man. so that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Let them play in the day. Again, you can't say, well, I like football, so we're going to – are you a Dallas fan, a Cowboys fan probably with – Probably not. I would imagine. <laughs> no? <laughs> Probably not. No. Let's no. talk college football, the NC State Wolfpack. Is, uh, okay, the Wolfpack. Yeah. Well, there we go right here, the wolf- buddy. There we go, there Wolfpack is. fan. <laughs> so you're a Wolfpack, but if you said to your daughters, okay, well, we're going to a Wolfpack game, and then at the end of the day you say, well, isn't that great we bonded? And they're like, Dad, I don't like the Wolfpack. <laughs> The I've <laughs> got a daughter like that. She likes the target. I'm not, I'm not quite sure she's really my daughter. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but even, even as they grow up, a, a lot of the entrepreneurs I've started to work with, and again, this strategy has become pretty popular over the last five years, especially in different entrepreneur groups I speak with. People say, my kid's 18, 19, 20, 21, 25. So you're not going to be able to meet once a quarter. But let me tell you what they're doing once a year. One time a year. They get together one-on-one with their phones off and spend a, a nice day together doing something fun and spending time to talk. Game changer. Because most of the times once they're 18 or older, like for me, you have big family get-togethers. And that's great. Oh, yeah. But it's not. It's different than one-on-one time. One-on-one. This is the glue that really pulls it all together and makes those bigger family gatherings that much more special. Yeah. So even if you do one, quote-unquote, you can call it Daddy Daughter Day, Father Sunday. I call it a board meeting just because – it was a play on words. I'm a surfer, so we always joke about board meetings in the ocean. <laughs> and so, um, but again, one one a year. Think I about know, that. Man. One That's on one. Yeah, no phone. The Fun thing there. 
Yeah, because yeah, I remember my Very grandfather rich. telling me uh, in his latter years, son, you know, you reach a certain age and all you got left are your memories. Yep. And, his mem- and then he started unpacking those memories and it was always of experiences with yeah. family members. And, uh, yeah. you know, my mom is still living, both my parents are. And so they talk about the latter days with their parents as, as they were mm. preparing to leave here. And uh, so I think age is irrelevant, Jim. Um, yeah. You, you just got to carve the time and make the time. But I'm probably not the best one to talk to about this because I'm that crazy guy who started his business. And then when his daughter uh, got into middle school, started running cross country and distance track, man, my whole predisposition was she's got one daddy. I got one daughter running track and cross country right now. I'm going to be there. So I was that crazy daddy running from point to point on the cross country track. You know, I probably ran my my K as well, uh, just going from point to point. And then when she went to college, she was gone, but we still talk about that. Hey dad, do you remember that time oh, yeah. coach had to pull you off the infield? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, just those, those kinds of things that they're irreplaceable. Uh, so yeah. what, what are yeah. some of the challenges? There's no, there's no substitute. None, none. Cause it's like, well, it's like I say, I'm the only daddy our daughters have. You know, what I've found is very simple recipe. There's no substitute for quality time. Not, not money, not fancy private schools, quality time. If you want to be close to your kids, that's, that's the meal ticket. That is, that is it. And your yeah. spouse. And if, and if for no other reason, <laughs> do it so they'll want to come around you when you're old and can't exactly. see them, you know, they'll yeah. make sure you're being taken care of in the sure. nursing home. That's what Big I tell insurance policy. <laughs> that's right. I tell my wife, look, we got to be nice to these girls because they're going to choose our nursing home. So there you go. So, yeah. Well, man, I love it. You've given all of us something to shoot for here. And uh, that is take the time and invest it in the quality relationships that really matter. And the amazing thing you'll find out, Faith Positive Nation, as Jim's told us today, is your business will prosper because you're doing business God's way. He gives you these primary relationships, so pay attention to those. Jim, somebody in Faith Positive Nation is going to want to know more. Uh, you mentioned your book. Tell us the title of that again and how we can get it, please. Yeah, it's called The Family Board Meeting. You've got 18 summers to build a lasting connection with your children. Mm. So it's, the title is The Family Board Meeting. So it's simple things about rhythms and going through that board meeting strategy and how to start prioritizing those and implementing them into your life. Great. Uh, available on Amazon. It's It's been a pretty good hit seems to help a lot of people. Okay, cool. So it's uh, paperback, Kindle, Audible, all that kind of all, stuff? All three of them. All right, wonderful, because we have folks who like to listen to books, people who do Kindle, and then those of us who prefer to hold the paper in our hands. Yep. Right, and your website, tell us that. 18summers.com. All right, I love that, man. You know, I guess <laughs> intellectually we know we only have 18 summers with our kids, but when you say 18summers.com, it adds some urgency to spending. Oh yeah, quality positive in urgency with a simple math equation. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. And so at 18summers.com, there's some contact information for you there. So Faith Positive Nation can reach out to you, right? Absolutely. All right, man. Jim, thanks for the gift of your time. Jim Shields, check him out, 18summers.com and the family board meeting. Uh, doesn't matter how old your kids are, you still want to spend time with them, right? Doesn't Absolutely. matter how long you've been married, you still want to get to know your spouse even better and talk about something besides the weather or your doctor's appointments or whatever else is going on in your world, right? So yep. go to 18summers.com or go to amazon.com and pick up your copy of the family board meeting today. All right, Jim, Faith Positive Nation always wants to know from our guest about a favorite Bible verse. You got one you want to share with us? Well, of course, but, and it's not to uh, kiss up to the name of the show, but, um, <laughs> my, one of my favorites has always been according to your faith, be it unto you. That uh-huh. one has always, always, always hit me. And then of course, uh, love is patient. Love is kind is, is one that, uh, has always hit me as well. But I think according to your faith, be it unto you is the one that definitely sticks out most for me. Yeah, he did talk about just a little bit of faith, mustard seed sized, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those mountains are jumping into lakes, right? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, thanks for sharing that with us, Jim. Jim, thanks so much. Pray God's blessings on you and Jamie, your incredible wife. 
and those four amazing sons. We thank you for your gift to Faith Positive Nation today. Thanks, Dr. Joey. Good to be here. Thanks for listening to Faith Positive Radio, the Christian business coaching conversation that increases your faith with greater joy at work so you love God and others more. Suggest guests and ask questions when you email Dr. Joey at info at getpositive.today. And be sure to get your free gift of the five positive business conversations to have today. Coaching program at getpositive.today. Until next time, may God bless you with everything your heart can hope for and more than your mind can imagine.